Welcome to St. Edward's Church in Leek for our service of morning prayer on this fifth Sunday in Lent, the 29th of March. We begin by inviting you to respond to the words that will come up on the screen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. And we're now going to sing our first hymn, which is Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy upon us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all, to you be praise and glory forever. 
from the waters of chaos you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We come now to sing our next song, My Jesus, My Saviour. Yeah. 
Now we have our Old Testament reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, read by Philip Patrick. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and I will cause flesh. To, to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and I prophesied suddenly there was a noise a rattling as the bones came together bone on its bone. I looked and there were sinews on the uh, and flesh had come upon them. The skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy that the breath, prophesy what? And say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the thought four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, I will bring you back up to, from your graves, O oh my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil, and you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 11, beginning at verse 17. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. 
Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up, and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth and Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. 
And now we sing our next hymn, O God, You Search Me and You Know Me. Heavenly Father, we pray now that as we come to reflect on your word, you will meet us afresh by your Holy Spirit and grant us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Both of our readings today are about resurrection, about God's total power over death. They are in a sense a trailer for what is to come in two weeks time when we will celebrate the greatest resurrection of all. In our present circumstances it is good to be reminded that ultimately death is not the end. For all who trust in Jesus death is not a full stop but a gateway to the life of eternity. And in the life of this present age God himself is with us in the midst of all our sufferings, sharing the pain and anguish and anger and sorrow that we feel, and holding before us the certain hope that one day it will all come to an end. You may have heard the joke asking, why did the chef resign? The answer is, because they cut his celery. 
Well, I don't know how accomplished a chef you are, but you'll probably all know that you can't make bread without flour or pancakes without eggs. The right ingredients are central to the finished product, and right now, of course, flour is hard to come by. Our Bible reading from Ezekiel this morning contains a very simple recipe with two ingredients. It's a well-known story, and there is a well-known song which goes with it, but it's interesting to note what the two ingredients are that God uses to create this great army. God takes Ezekiel in the spirit to a valley filled with dry bones. That's quite a scary place to be if we stop and consider it for a moment. God did not expect his prophets to be squeamish or easily disturbed. The bones are piled up and the only significant thing we are told about them is that they are dry. In other words, they have been there for a very long time. Any flesh and sinews that might once have been attached to them have completely disappeared and only the dried bones remain. In Israelite culture, dried bones in themselves would not have been as unfamiliar a sight as they are to us now. When a person died, their remains were not buried in the earth or cremated as in our culture today, but laid to rest in some kind of tomb which could be revisited at a later date. This is the kind of tomb that Jesus himself was laid to rest in. The bodies would be left there to decay, a process which could take up to 50 years, after which the dried bones would be collected by the family and placed in a bone box or ossuary, so that the shelf on which the body had lain was freed for another body to be placed there. So in this vision that God gives him, Ezekiel is taken to a valley full of the bones of people who died well over 50 years ago. And it is there that two things happen. First of all, God asks Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones, and flesh is then formed on them. Secondly, God asks Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind and the breath of the Spirit comes into the flesh and brings it to life. This is very simple and yet also very profound. God takes flesh and he takes spirit and he brings them both together to create living human beings. This is exactly the same pattern that we find recorded in Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God made man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Now it might be interesting to ask why God creates living human beings in this two-stage way. After all, he is God, and can very easily do the whole thing all in one go, if he chose to. So presumably, it is his deliberate choice to do things in two stages. He creates the physical shell of a human being, and then he breathes life into it. So if Ezekiel had walked out halfway through the process, he would have left behind a pile of dead bodies, which would have been equally as useless as a pile of of dry bones. The division of the creation of human life into these two parts is very informative. It tells us that at our very foundation there is a physical element to our life, but that there is also a spiritual one, and that the two are bound closely together. Both have their source in the activity of God, and both have to be together for there to be life as we know it at all. But apart from the immediate illustration of the fact that human beings are both flesh and spirit, this passage also has something to show us about the way in which God's word is fulfilled. He proclaims his word to Ezekiel, his intention to create a living army. 
but he uses the two distinct ingredients of the flesh and the spirit in order to bring his word about. There is a new perspective that we can view this passage from now that we are living in the new covenant and have the lens of the New Testament to view things through. We are of course alive in the same way that the army created from the bones was. We are more than just bones and bodies, we are living, moving, thinking people into whom God has breathed his creative breath of human life. But there is another life beyond and above this life which God also wants us to share in. That life is brought to us and guaranteed by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in all who come to believe in Jesus. The process that Jesus himself called being born again. Paul describes those who are without faith and therefore without the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit as dead in God's sight. Paul talks about our human state before we come to faith as being dead in our trespasses and sins. And he also declares God's intention to bring us out of that state into the experience of new life through faith in Jesus Christ. Just as God proclaimed his intentions to Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones and then proceeded to carry them out, so he has also proclaimed his intentions to us through Jesus Christ and seeks to carry them out. God told the bones that he would make them alive and he tells us that he wants to make us alive too. He promised temporal earthly life to the bones but he promises eternal spiritual life to us. By the power of his breath God transformed the bones and by the power of his spirit he is also able to transform us. In 2 Corinthians Paul writes if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So, both the bones and us start off with a promise of new life from God. But there is a difference between us and the bones. God needed two ingredients to fulfil his word, the flesh and the spirit. There was no objection from the dry bones, which then took on flesh. God said, I will take you and give you life, and there was no argument when he breathed his breath into them. But when God comes to us with the promise of eternal life, he does not thrust it upon us, but waits for us to respond. God has one of his two ingredients, the Spirit. But if he is going to be able to fulfil his purpose in our lives, we have to give him the other ingredient by surrendering ourselves to him. He invites us and waits for us to respond in faith, and then he is able to get to work. And there are two results of this process. We read, in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 6 and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. A lot of people today and over the centuries have asked the question what is the purpose of life and many many different answers have been suggested but the Bible is actually very clear about what the purpose of life is and it's set out very simply in this verse you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. God's purpose for us all is firstly that we should receive eternal life by coming to faith in Jesus Christ, and secondly, that we should know him, because his Holy Spirit then dwells in us, so that we can live our lives in daily relationship with him. We are called to surrender ourselves to him, not just as a one-off experience when we come to faith, but as an ongoing attitude of our heart, day by day, as we open ourselves to the relationship that faith brings to us, seeking and learning to discover whatever his Spirit 
might be wanting to work in us, between us and through us. So being a Christian is like throwing ourselves into God's hands and letting him mix us up with his spirit to bring us new life and then to help us to live it. God has a purpose for us in each day and he calls us to offer ourselves to him so that he can fulfill it. That benefits us because of course we receive eternal life and come into relationship with the one who made us. And it also benefits God too because he can better fulfill his plans and purposes for us and for the world he has made when he has our cooperation. There is a world of people out there who are still spiritually dead, like the Valley of Dry Bones. It is our task, as the church, God's people, to bring to them the message of life, so that they too can be transformed. Part of our calling as the people of God, our Heavenly Father, is to reach out to the communities in which we live with the love and light and life of Jesus Christ. To be the legs and feet and arms and hands and voices of the gospel in whatever part of God's world we inhabit. To be available as human beings to cooperate in the work of the Holy Spirit who chooses very often not to work alone and without us. So, in the midst of these troubled times, as the world travels through the valley of the shadow of death, let's remember that beyond our physical lives, our Creator God offers us all the blessings of spiritual life, which is eternal and immune to any kind of disease or virus, and that this secure and permanent life is found in Jesus. Once we receive that life, then God breathes into us the wonderful gift of his Holy Spirit. Not just to be with us, but to live inside us and to transform us. To lift us out of the dry and barren places we may have inhabited and bring us into a fruitful place. To bring us from the wilderness into the fertile plain of his goodness and mercy. To empower us with a strength beyond our own to go out and serve him and be the means through which his glory and his love are revealed to the world. Jesus called us to love our neighbour as ourselves. And our neighbours have never needed us as much as they do now. As we live within the physical limitations of social distancing, which we must all accept, let's recognise that the power of the Holy Spirit has no limits, that he is never at a distance. And let's truly be open in fresh ways to him, so that we can know him as he wants us to and so shape our lives and influence the lives of everyone we have contact with in ways that honour God and please God and are directed by God. Let's be more conscious and aware of God's daily invitation to us to place our physical human bodies in his hands and let the life of his spirit infuse us anew so that by his power we give expression to the life of Christ and make that life visible in the world around us in whatever ways we can. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you want to share the life of your spirit with us that you have made us to be in living relationship with you and that you graciously and lovingly invite us to believe and trust in all that Jesus has done for us so that your spirit 
can get to work in our lives. Thank you that you hold out to us the promise of eternal life with you forever. And thank you that we can begin to experience that life and catch glimpses of eternity here and now as we live each day with you and in you and for you. Help us to bring your life to bear on the dry bones of our community, our nation and our world so that your kingdom will grow as others come to recognise your purpose for them. Uphold and strengthen us in all our struggles and help us to give ourselves more freely and more completely to you so that in the power of your spirit we can be all that you made us to be. Amen. So now, let's declare our faith together using the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now we come to sing our next hymn, O oh, to See the Dawn.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You sent your Son to be our Saviour. In your love you have opened for us the way to eternal life and rescued us from perishing. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, to refresh and renew your church, which without you is dull and dreary. Come, fill the church, which without you is dead. Fill the church with your life-giving presence and give it the power to proclaim the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, renew our faith in you. Give to your church a new sense of mission and outreach. Bless all preachers and ministers of the sacraments with the joy of the good news. Come, Lord, revive us. Renew your people. Come, Lord, be known in all who share your saving purposes. Guide and bless all rescue workers. We remember doctors and nurses, ambulance workers and paramedics. We pray for the fire service, for people who work on lifeboats and for all who risk their lives in the service of others. We especially pray also for those who are carers within our communities, looking after the most vulnerable. 
Come, Lord, revive us. Renew your people. Come, Lord, let your presence be known in our homes and in our lives. Bless us in all our relationships and dealings with others. Come, Lord, with your light and love to lives that are struggling with poverty and debt, with uncertainty and doubt, with fear and brokenness. Come, Lord, revive us. Renew your people. Come, Lord, to all whose hope is gone, the lost, the despairing, and the deeply depressed. We remember the overworked, the world-weary, the exhausted, and the worn out. We ask your blessing upon those who feel wrung out and dry, all who feel numb, and those whose senses are deadened. We pray for all suffering from deep stress or trauma and their loved ones caring for them. Come, Lord, revive us. Renew your people. We give thanks for the hope of life eternal. And we pray that you will strengthen us all whom we love, and all your people, as we seek to follow in the footsteps of all the saints who have gone before us, until that day when we all come to know the joys of your kingdom and the fullness of life eternal. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So now we sing our final hymn. <laughs>
And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light and love into our hearts, rest upon you, remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and uphold you, today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service here this morning. We hope to see you again next week. In the meantime, may you be richly blessed. <laughs>